Hi everyone, this is George Daniel. Today we're gonna to tie a crest bug pattern developed by my friend and mentor, Joe Humphreys. To get started, we're gonna start off with a Tiemco 3769 size 14 hook or any equivalent. To give this fly a little bit of weight, we're gonna start off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight turns of 20 thousandths lead wire. We're gonna lock that in using a six op light olive thread and we're going to cover the lead wire lock that in place and if you look at a lot of the crest bugs they often have kind of like a light olive hue or tone to them now the dubbing can be personal preference but the dubbing material i prefer to use a friend of mine named joe Acori has got a natural fur blend in a natural hair's ear color it is probably some of the best dubbing I've come across. Anytime you're trying to do kind of like a, a, a furry style nymph, this is just a, a mixture of a much, bunch of natural materials. Very easy, very soft. You do not need dubbing wax for this dubbing. And to create a base layer, we're gonna have a very thin, kind of tightly wound dub section. We're gonna start near the eye and wrap back towards the bend covering the entire hook shank. And then we're gonna come back over to kind of double it up. So can I get started there? Yep, there we are. Start wrapping back. One wrap over the last, next to the last, right back to the point where the bend begins. Okay? Now, we're gonna create another layer. This time it can be Maybe not as tightly wound. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull some of these fibers out to imitate the legs of the crest bug. But this pattern, again, is so easy to tie. And it's got so much more movement than a lot of the crest bug patterns I've seen currently on the market. There's a reason why it's has been one of the staple patterns in Central PA for the last 20, 25 years, at least for me, because it just catches fish. We're gonna keep dubbing, wrap up. Okay, right in front. Now we're gonna use wet, wet or moisten our fingers a little bit, pull some of those stray fibers back. Lock that in. Now whip finish. Now, cut the thread off. Do a little haircut if you need. Now with a pair of flat pliers, we're gonna go in parallel to the hook shank and we're just gonna flatten this body straight down. The weight, the lead wire that we put in there is gonna add a little bit of weight, but also that's gonna help kinda hold that flattened shape once we use the pliers. Now with a little Velcro teaser, we can pull even a few more fibers off this side you can see now we're starting to get a real nice flat in appearance. Now with scissors, I'm just going to cut just off this side, leaving those fibers standing straight out to either side. And then we can flatten the top. Now to kind of hold those fibers in place, you could use rib. Or in this case, we're going to use Loon UV clear fly finish in a, in a thin consistency, we're just gonna put a nice little dab over top of that, kind of work it in. This is gonna give the fly some translucency, but just as important, it's gonna hold the shape of this pattern once it comes in contact with the water. So we don't really need the rib to hold those fibers in place this UV coating right over top is gonna to hold those fibers for us and give us the translucency that we're looking for. And right there is a deadly, absolutely deadly crest bug pattern. Again, just a slight modification from Joe Humphreys. He would use Grizzly Hackle to give the flies a little more leg movement. But in all honesty, with this dub blend that my friend Joe came up with, you really don't need the hackle. You can cut one step out and you can have a very effective cell bug pattern. Thanks for watching.